Hello biology class, welcome back to another lecture. This one is lesson six, uh, small intestine and the liver. Uh, so the key points above me, the first three are the different parts of the small intestine. And the number four is the liver, which I know is large, uh, it kind of encapsulates a lot, um, but I thought that was the best way to split up the key points. So the first three are really the small intestine. Let's jump in. This is a diagram that we're going to be referring to uh, throughout the next couple of lectures. It has several features on it that we've already discussed and several features that we're going to discuss. So you can see the stomach is here. The fundus is this curve up top with the body, the cardia, the cardia and the pyloric antum. And then we have the small intestine here. You notice that this is labeled as the duodenum. So the duodenum is the first part of the small intestine. We also have labeled on here the liver, which we're gonna talk about today. It's this really big organ that overlays a lot of stuff. It does a lot of jobs. We have the gallbladder here, which we'll talk about in the future, as well as the pancreas, the pancreatic duct, the bile duct. We'll talk about all of that. So we'll refer back to this diagram uh, semi-regularly in the next little bit. Uh, first, so the duodenum is the first portion of the small intestine. Uh, gastric chyme moves into the duodenum for further breakdown of food in the small intestine using enzymes. So chyme moves from the stomach into the small intestine, which is a duodenum or the first section. Uh, some different points here for each part is going to be added. So this is the principal site for iron absorption. So you need to be able to break down meat into its very tiny parts in your stomach. Uh, so it's the principal site for iron absorption. Secretin and cholestic, sorry, cholecystokinin are released from cells in response to acidic and fatty chyme present. So essentially uh, these different enzymes are released to neutralize the acid. So gastric chyme enters the duodenum, iron is absorbed, and different uh, acidic portions of the stuff in your stomach is neutralized so it doesn't hurt your small intestine. The second uh, part is the jejunum, and that is the second key point. Uh, the interior surface of the jejunum is covered in finger-like projections, and we are going to talk about that again more in another lecture, but these finger-like projections are called villi. And these villi increase the surface area that is available to absorb nutrients from ingested foodstuffs. So once you eat food, you're gonna break it down into these tiny, tiny pieces, and then your body is going to work really hard to absorb it. So it needs to increase the surface area uh, within your intestine to, to absorb stuff. So that is what the villi is for. The second part is the principal site of absorption. As much stuff as possible gets absorbed in the jejunum. It is involved in the magnesium absorption. So lots of different stuff, including magnesium, gets um, absorbed in the jejunum. And it is, key, it is number four in our um, list of digestive processes from our very first lecture in this unit. The third part of the small intestine is the ileum. It is responsible for the final stages of protein and carbohydrate digestion. It secretes protease, protease and carbohydrate enzymes. So it, protease is the breakdown of proteins and carbohydrates is the breakdown of carbohydrates. Uh, it functions to absorb vitamin B, any bile salts that we've released, which we'll talk about. They're very valuable, so we need to suck them back up into our body to be able to use again. And whatever products of digestion were not absorbed by the jejunum, it has many villi as well. So it kind of is uh, very similar to the jejunum in the structure where it has villi, and it kind of cleans up everything uh, that hasn't been absorbed in the jejunum. So really a lot of the breakdown stuff happens in the duodenum, the first part, and then absorption happens in the jejunum and the ileum. We'll talk about um, the large intestine in a future lesson after we talk about the gallbladder and the pancreas. Um, but le next, let's get to the liver. So we've talked about the small intestine and the liver needs to make stuff to be able to inject into the small intestine to help break things down. 
So the liver is the largest glandular organ of the body. It is huge. It is a very large part. It is located in the upper right quadrant of the abdomen. Uh, one of its jobs is, pardon me, to decompose red blood cells. It produces hormones. It helps regulate energy and breaks down carbs. So we're going to talk about uh, the transfer from glucose to glycogen and back to glucose in lesson nine in this unit, but it is very important in helping store glucose as glycogen and then breaking it down so that you can use it in an emergency. Uh, it's very, very important for that. Um, the liver stores vitamins and minerals. So again, pause these slides and write them down if you've missed anything. Make sure you go back and write it all down. Uh, but the liver stores vitamins and minerals. It produces bile, which is stored in the gallbladder, which helps break down fat. Uh, the liver detoxifies the body. You've all heard the jokes. I'm doing a number on my liver. Well, um, that is because the liver detoxifies your, your entire body. Um, produces urea in order to rid the body of toxic material produced by the breakdown of proteins. So it, it produces so many different things um, to help us in digesting food and protecting us from the toxins in our body. Um, it's very, very complex. Uh, the liver processes alcohol in order to allow your body to safely excrete it or get rid of it. So there's lots of stuff going on in the liver. Um, one thing that's important is that we relate the terminology that we're going to be seeing in future lessons, uh, especially in the, cardiac, uh, the circulatory system unit, is that the uh, words that start in hepat are related to the liver. So hepat is the Greek word for liver. So the blood that is that feeds the liver is the hepatic artery and the hepatic portal vein. The hepatic artery feeds oxygenated blood and the hepatic portal brings blood from back from the digestive system so that it can be absorbed and distributed in the rest of our body. So when we see hepatic or hepat we're automatically thinking liver. If we've got a hepatic disease, that's a liver disease. Uh, if you have hepatic uh, failure, that's liver failure. Uh, hepatic is always related to the liver. What I'd like you to check out here, and they're included in your notes, I do believe, is these videos of uh, liver transplants and liver resections. They, again, use electrocauterization to stop any bleeding. Uh, at the site as well as they put these probes in that close that coagulates blood to stop uh, any excess bleeding uh, during a liver transplant or a liver resection just taking part of the liver out uh, you can do this because the liver is so big and the liver is literally the one organ in your body that will regrow at least a portion of itself so it is able to do that um, so check out those videos and come back or just do finish the video here, that's good too. Uh, so your job is to do the liver disease questions that are after this um, section of notes. And if you have any questions, please, please let me know. Uh, I'm here to help. Thanks very much for watching everyone and I'll see you soon.